I'm here with Allie from Iola, uh, also known as Allie Johnson. She is the marketing director at the Iola Old Car Show, one of the largest car shows in the U.S., and it happens to just be in the small town of Iola, Wisconsin. (laughs) So, Allie, how does such a large car show uh, get to be in Iola? Yeah, so it actually really goes back to our founder, um, Chet Crozy. So he started a publications company here in Iola. I believe he came here because of family, and it was where he kind of wanted to settle down. Um, and so after the war, he came and started a publications company. It was mostly based on numismatics and coin collecting. Um, and then in the early 70s, I, he diversified. He was a classic car collector himself. So he started Old Color Old Cars Weekly, which is still running as Old Cars um, in Stevens Point. And uh, in 70. Um, was the first, um, you know, unofficial Iola car show. He invited a bunch of his friends with their classic cars to come down by the lake, and he was trying to push and sell his publication, Old Cars Weekly. So that was kind of the first inaugural. Um, like you said, it's a very small town. We have about 1,300 people now. I'm sure it was even less then. So very small, and it just kind of exploded exponentially since there. And over the last 50 years, um, we've grown to 134,000 people. And this Iola Car Show this year is from Thursday, July 11th to Mm -hmm. Saturday, July 13th. Uh, Has it always been three days, a full weekend event like this, or is this pretty new to be this long? Um, so it's all it's I would say it has not always been a multi multi day event. It started just as a day event and then it grew um to two to three days and then I think even at once we tried four days um and then it went back to three days and uh it was I think Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we dropped this Sunday and picked up a Thursday. So for as long as I can remember, which has been the last couple of years <laughs> at least, <laughs> six or seven years, I think, we've been a Thursday, uh Friday and Saturday show. How many cars are going to be at this year's show? Yeah, so this year, uh, most of uh, the last couple of years, we've welcomed over 2,500 show cars. And usually each year we have a theme um, that kind of just gives it a special ring to the car show. And this year is Meeting of the Muscle. So we have uh, everything from pre-war, post-war modified. We have Blue Ribbon here. Um, we have old cars, young drivers, women with wheels, original owners, and survivor vehicles. So really wide variety of uh, eye candy here, as you would say, for the automotive industry. So this year is your 52nd anniversary. Yep. Uh, you are past the 50-year point. How does the Iola Car Show keep growing every year? You know, you try to move with the times. Um, you are really balancing two crowds here. You're balancing, you know, the older crowd that really loves the purists, the classics. You know, they don't usually modify their cars too much. And then you're getting into the younger generation. So um, in the last couple of years, we've added a late model section. This year, we're bringing in um, some newer cars. And it's it's not to at all offend any of the older cars, but you've got to marry both sides. And some of the kids these days are just looking at those newer cars. Um, but mind you, I mean, uh, a 20, uh, our, our show cars go up to 1995 so that's already you know 20 years old which is uh which is crazy to think about almost you know (laughs) and uh so is it all ages that are at this event or do you mostly see um people wanting to see the classic cars that are older so because we have such a wide variety of happenings going on on the grounds, it really is a large family event and it it welcomes old to new. So we have an Iola Gear Kids section that we've added the last two years and it uh, it includes Wapaka Foundry's Foundry in a Box to, um, you can do a pouring of a key, keychain for, with molten iron um, and that's really allowed more of the family stuff to go on so that the kids can be as entertained as the parents are. Um, besides just the show cars, we also have 4,000 swap spaces, which many, and this I would say is more, you you know, male heavy in that area, but a lot of guys go shopping for their car parts. And that's still one of the purest and the best in the United States. Um, and I was at a car show last weekend and that's what we continue to hear is, is still one of the best swap meets, um, in the nation. So it really is, um, we have a car corral where you can buy cars and they, there's no cap on how old that car is. So it can be brand new cars that they can sell in the car corral, but it's just an exchange down there. And we do have a campground that really allows families and friends and groups to come together and enjoy all of the things we have to offer while still camping and enjoying that aspect of it to give people an idea that haven't been to the iola old car show before how large of an area does this car show take up 
Yeah, so we as the Iolo Car Show own about 325 acres. The actual car show and swap meet itself is over 100 acres. Um, our campground is, I think, around 80 acres, and it is just a wide variety. We have parking lots, of course, um, and then everybody in the community also uh, helps or you know uh, benefits from this. They're parking people in their in their uh, yards, so it kind of just expands a little bit. And um, you know, we're we're built on volunteers. While we have 10 full time staff that work year round, um, we bring in almost 2,000 volunteers. during the event to help with uh, put this thing on. Wow, it's absolutely incredible. And this must have such a huge impact uh, on Iola during the car show weekend. How has the car show helped Iola as a small town continue to grow and succeed? Yeah, so we, I would say it's not even just Iola. We did a economic impact study in 2022 for our 50th anniversary. Um, and we looked at the six, um, our, our county, Wapaka County and the six surrounding counties. And we bring in 25 to $30 million of revenue um, from the event that we put on. So while the community itself, Iola, I mean, many of the volunteers, you're either here volunteering at the show or you get out of Dodge for the car show. Um, but our it helps, you know, bring in money for the schools that can support school projects. Um, a lot of the we have our seasonal staff as a lot of the students from the local local high school. Um, it is just really a community event. And, you know, Iola would definitely continue to be a, a town in a city without us, but it, it brings in that extra revenue that you wouldn't have in such a small town. Yeah, and I know that um, being from the nearby town of Wapaka, we, we noticed the impact of the car show. It is busier during that weekend in the mm -hmm. town and all over the place. So it, it impacts towns, you know, 15, 20 minutes away. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though uh, Iola, all the stuff's happening there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Everyone's still in the area. So it's really awesome yeah. that an event of this size happens in um, a small community. How large is Iola? So we have about 1300 people and we don't even have a stoplight. So yeah, even, even yeah. hotels, you think of people are like, well, where do we stay? We're like, well, we got a campground, but it's not yeah. always everyone's cup of tea. So we're filling, we're filling uh, hotels, you know, 20 to a hundred miles outside of the show, just because of the people are trying to stay close if they're not driving daily to the show. Yeah. So I bet Stevens point nearby yeah. Iola probably gets a lot of hotel rooms in Wausau. areas yep. yeah um and how did you get involved with the iola car show did you go as a kid and just love it or so I didn't, I didn't I didn't actually grow up so my one tie to the classic car community is I learned stick shift on a 1974 Volkswagen Beetle named Daisy she does have enough headroom for my 6-1 figure <laughs> um but beyond that I uh I volunteered um I volunteered in 2019 but before that I attended um when my husband and I moved to Iola we I thought I should come and check out what this car show is about as uh, like you are I grew up in Wapaka and like I knew it was big but I just never understood the magnitude of it I was always working on you know it's either the weekend of the fourth the weekend after the fourth so um i was always working during that time and never made it out here but um i met my boss working at the liquidators in wapaka right across the high school and he would always make banners and need them last minute i'm like who is this guy needing these banners and why you know it's why how can it be this big and so um i did mention him once i'm like if you ever need a volunteer and he's like yeah do you want to come help out and i was like absolutely so in 2019 i volunteered in the tower and i absolutely fell in love with everything that the iola car show is like like i said i don't know that much about cars but it was just more the community and the people that really drew me to it it's like they they knew about their car and they were willing to tell you about their car and as long as you were open and listening to it you know they wanted to share their story and how this tied into their family so um 2019 was my start i volunteered and i was like hey if you ever have a job opening i don't care what it is like just let me know i was i was a safety manager at the time i had no recollection to marketing or to car shows but you know they called me um later later that year and i was hired in late uh, 2019 my first car show was the cancellation in 2020. Um, so I said, please don't fire me. I, I still kind of need a job. Um, hmm. But we made it through the cancellation and uh, it's been going strong now. It's my fourth year and I absolutely love it here. So uh, first off, what is the tower? So the tower. So the tower is a giant central location on the grounds. In the early 80s, it was brought over as a communications tower, I believe, from the Upper Peninsula or Michigan, somewhere in Michigan, I think. And it's 103 feet tall. And what we did was we built around that our central location, so our information hub. And it's um, in one area, we do some food out of it with, with, with Wisconsin River Meats. In another area, we help with online registration. In another area, my photographers, uh, they have their little corner to charge and reset. 
um, while they're here on site. And then in in the front, in the north facing uh, section of it, we have our staff at the tower ready to ask, uh, help you with any questions and kind of direct things where they need to be during the show. What have you enjoyed the most about your position at the Iola Car Show, especially since you said you haven't done any marketing before this job? Yeah, um, I would say definitely the people. And it's not even, I meet a lot of celebrityness. I've been very blessed in the automotive industry to rub elbows with some of the greatest. But it's truly the people that attend the show and the volunteers. I myself vend at other shows. I bring a trailer and I go advertise for it or I sell merchandise. So um, the vendors and our show car people, they've really welcomed me as a non-car person with open arms. And it has been fantastic. And hearing their stories and, you know, I, I've refixed grandpa's car and after, you know, grandma died, I was able to fix it up and just, I love those stories. And that's really what makes it, uh, it the most enjoyable for me is hearing that. And uh, just the family aspect of being in this, I was, I was big into sports, but now since I'm out of high school and college, I don't have that kind of family atmosphere And this, this automotive one is definitely my family now. What are you looking forward to the most about this year's car show that's special and different than any other car show? Yeah. So one thing um, that we've been working on uh, that I haven't shared any pictures of yet is the Oasis. And it's an outdoor bar and out, uh, kind of park-like atmosphere. And it is just an addition to our show that I think is much needed. Um, we don't have a lot of shade and that's one of the biggest complaints at the show. So this is a nice park-like area to go grab a cold drink and sit down and relax from the chaos because as a whole, our show is definitely overwhelming. It's a lot of people, sometimes it's dusty. Um, and so this is just a nice area to kind of get out there and relax and take it all in from a moment. But um, in terms of special guests, Henry Winkler was here in 2018 and I didn't, I was not at the show yet. And so he is coming back this year with Anson Williams and Donnie Most. And I cannot wait to meet uh, the Fonz. I'm so excited about that. And uh, for the second year, we have Derek Beery. So Derek is an awesome builder. He's a YouTuber, um, very family oriented, very down to earth. And he's coming back for a second year. So it's not new, but um, we're just very excited to have him back on site rebuilding another car. So the car he's bringing is new. So that'll be cool. <laughs> Oh, so he's rebuilding a car on site during the show. Yeah. So if you check out his channel, it's Vice Grip Garage. There are three episodes from last year that he did on site during the show. And he wow. did an engine swap on a Pontiac. And it was so cool to watch him. I mean, like, it was, he's just a really down to earth person and super uh, likable, I think. And he has these Derekisms and the words that, you know, us Midwesterners like to use. And uh, he's just a fantastic person. So to watch him work and to be under that kind of scrutiny of all those eyes watching him, but yeah. people just, he stopped to sign a few things. He did, you know, autographing throughout the day and just, uh, it made the show even that much more family oriented to just kind of see that happen in person. Going back to the park, because the, that's a, the Oasis that's new mm -hmm. this year. Did the Iola Car Show have to build a brand new park on the grounds so not really build it. We um, acquired a, a piece of property off to the east. And obviously, we're in a very small, uh, you know, suburbia kind of area. So pro property is hard to come by, but we we're able to um, buy this one last year. And we took down a fence that was between us and the property. And it has a lot of trees, which is not, you know, we don't have a ton of trees here on the grounds, you want more stuff to fill up the grounds rather than trees. But this area has those trees. So we just took down a fence and kind of uh, added a couple cool features. And there's going to be a very big um, indicator. You'll you'll see when I put out some pictures and stuff of what kind of draws you to that. But uh, it just made for a really cool uh, addition for the show. For first time goers for the Iola mm -hmm. old car show that want to check this out, uh, what should they know? Because I could see this event being a little bit overwhelming, especially mm -hmm. for someone that's not been to a swap meet or a car show before. Yeah. So what do you recommend someone brand new to this do when they go to the car show? Yeah, well, first plan out where you're staying months, if not years in advance. <laughs> Just kidding. There's still places, but that's a big one as we always hear. But we always have a campground if anyone uh, does that. But definitely wear your walking shoes, even though, um, I mean, the, the show is massive and whether or not you like to look at parts or show cars, I mean, it's truly worth it to walk the entire ground. So, um, make sure that you're, you're there and you got your shoes on, um, and kind of plan out your trip. You know, if you kind of sporadically walk through, you're going to miss something or you're going to be like, Oh, I didn't know that was happening there. So we do have a schedule of events out that 
kind of says when our special guests are having things or when we're having music on the main stage. So um, take a look at that. We do have an app. In previous years, our service has not been great. Of course, you bring 60, 70,000 people in during one day, you're not going to have great service, but that is improved. And we have an app that kind of helps you get to places as well. So if uh, people, people are interested, oh, I need to see this vendor, then you can find them on the app and locate them and then you can go to them. So that's kind of nice. Um, and the show car area, um, the post war is one big area, but in the rest of it, there's a lot of, there is more shade over there. So you can catch some shade. The Iowa Alliance Club builds picnic tables. And so we have a ton of picnic tables that are throughout the grounds for seating. So you can catch your breath too. And there's plenty of food and drink. Yeah, oh, certainly. Yes. So, yeah. No. Yeah. If it goes without saying, but yeah, we have, um, Iola car show run, uh, uh, food stands that are made are run by our volunteers. Otherwise, we have over 20 plus food trucks on site during the event. So you can get a variety of, you know, where we I love that about it, because like, we don't get much variety in Iola, like, like we talked about, we have a subway, and a few local places that we love to eat at. But you know, it, this this gives you a variety for a couple of days, which is yeah. nice. Is there anything else that um, you think uh, people should know about the car show or that you want to share? Um, I'm trying to think. So I just released um, recently that Don Garlitz has joined our star studded lineup for our um, special guests. We do do a, uh, we have a one day pinstriping class for a couple hours, one of the days. So if you want to learn how to pinstripe, a world renowned pinstriper will be on site. Um, the class is still available. I think there are some still, uh, still some spots left. Um, we have a couple more special guests. John Profs of Lassie, who is Timmy, is coming to the show Friday and Saturday. And then Stan Livingston, who is Chip of My Three Sons, will be there as well. So those kind of and, uh, you know, fit with our nostalgia crowd and it's really exciting to welcome them, them on site. If you have families, um, definitely go hit up the Iola Gear Kids area. There's a sandbox, there's going to be face painting, they can make a keychain, and they can uh, do a scavenger hunt kind of out on the grounds, which gives them a sense of, you know, a swapping while they're here at the Iola Car Show at a level that's safe and acceptable for kids that they'll enjoy. So it's been a uh, really fun growing that area. Folks Brothers uh, brings in sand for a giant sandbox and we put vintage Tonka toys there. So it's still for the kids, but it resonates with the older crowd as well. Um, overall, just be just be ready to open it up and, you know, take it all in. That's that's what my hopes are for people. It's, it's just an awesome event and unlike any other one in the world, for sure. How do you get people like Henry Winkler to want to come all the way out to Iola. I know he has uh, strong ties to Wisconsin because of mm -hmm. his character, but uh, like he's not like a car guy or he might yeah. be. You know? Right. Well, everyone asked us if he's bringing his motorcycle or his bike. And we said, no, he's not bringing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, besides the Wisconsin tie, um, once we get into that, once the I would say his level of celebrities have started coming to our show and talking about it. They want to come back each year. And so Henry was here in 2018, um, kind of that Wisconsin tie. We brought him and, and he absolutely has an open invitation every year to come back because he's fantastic. And this is finally the year that we got him back. And ha Happy Days is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. So it's a really cool tie to have that all together. Um, and yeah, once Asel's special guest is here and we get them out here, they have an open invitation and they absolutely love coming back. So it is such a cool thing that like we are one of those events. Um, I talked to Ryan of counting cars um, last week at a different car show. And, you know, I mentioned to him, Hey, I'm from Iola. I was not there when you were there as a special guest. He's like, Oh, I know Iola. It was one of my, it's one of my top four shows. And this guy has been to many of them, you know, but they absolutely love the show and they want to come back. And it is a, it is a cool, unique show that they don't experience other places. So they, they keep it close to the vest for sure. That's really cool. And mm -hmm. the Iola car show is definitely become so established and so well recognized in the area for both car people and non car people. Yeah. And it's amazing the economic impact that this event has had. And I'm really glad that we got to talk about it on Podpaca with uh, it being a show that mm -hmm. uh, talks about small towns because this is a very unique circumstance that I don't think. I've seen an economic impact like this in a town with less than 1500 people. Like yeah. that's almost unheard of. So this is mm -hmm. a really unique and cool story. And it's really great what you are all doing there at Iola. 
Uh, well, thank you. It, it is cool to have such a wide breadth of like, not only people that know the show, but that want to help those communities out as well. So we that economic impact you're talking about, we're, we're affecting if we look at Wapaka County and the six surrounding counties, we bring in 25 to $30 million of revenue each year. And beyond that, we're a nonprofit that gives back to the volunteers who donate their time at our show. It goes back to their 120 plus organizations. So you're talking schools and churches and, and good things that people it's going back. And I think we, we gave, we wrote out checks to for $285,000 last year. Um, and you can just think where that money goes. And these are other groups that are helping other people. And it's just a fantastic feeling to work for them. What are the future goals for the Iola car show? Uh, you might not know some of them since you're going to have the car show here yeah. soon, but what are you looking forward to as the Iola car show keeps growing and growing and get into 2030 and whatnot? Yeah. So I think it's just that evolution of how do you t marry the classics with the new age? And um, they don't tell me too much because I do talk a lot. <laughs> I don't have any deep, dark secrets to share with you, but it is just um, balancing that out to, um, act out of, you know, keeping those uh, keeping those older folks happy in those cars and and the builds and recognizing that there's new trends and new things going on. And and with every other, you know, thing in in the world that has a uh, moment. So right now, you know, station wagons and trucks are really hot. And how do you focus on those in the next coming years? So we usually start working on our next um, theme at the right after the show if not we're not you know if we're thinking about it before the show even we'll announce it soon after um but yeah it's it's kind of marrying that uh classic industry with the new injury industry and see how we can evolve with the crowd around us do you all have the goal of trying to top the last year's show and keep getting better and better or are you focused more on uh just keeping it um just as good as last year what what do you go um into this car show trying to accomplish yeah so i mean e each year as a business you want to always get better but what does that mean does it mean the sameness for a car industry you know how do you do it we aren't quite that aftermarket world of cars yet so that's uh you know like there's some that are always a new product and always that more um i would say a lot of it's focused on the swap meet and making sure that remains pure and having those parts available because we are one of the best swap meets in the united states so making sure that we have those parts available and people are coming and bringing the right thing and and having those spaces available for people so it is a really good balance of you know keeping thing, keeping thing the things the same but making those subtle differences to keep it evolving as well and last question before mm -hmm. uh, we're done here um what is your all-time favorite iola car show moment oh my gosh um I would say it was two years ago. Um, it was Sunday after the show. So we, you know, don't, we don't really kick people out Saturday night. You know, people are still here on Sunday cleaning up the grounds. And I was going around talking with some vendors that are kind of straggling. And um, there was one guy who, um, I think it was a nomad. He was looking at a car and, you know, I, I stopped him. I'm like, oh, did you, you know, is this your car? Did you buy it? And he's like, well, you know, the funny thing is, is I sold it 30 years ago when I was having a young family and I, and I was, you know, we needed money and it wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting in the garage. And he's like, I sold it at Iola, at Iola. And he's like, it's back here. And I bought it back. And he's like, I paid a lot more than I sold it for, for sure. You know, and he was laughing, but just to hear his life story of how that kind of came full circle for him and like how so money for the car industry, but the memories that car evoked for him, he'll never be able to replace. And he was able to find that car. So just that reunion of sorts, um, that one was pretty special to be able to witness and hear that story from him. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. Thank you for all your time today, Allie. Yeah. And just a reminder for everyone, the Iola Old Car Show and Swap Meet is Thursday, July 11th through Saturday, July 13th. There are events happening all day, including mm -hmm. this year's special, the meeting of the muscle. And uh, if you've never been, uh, it's in it's bigger than you think. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you'll be surprised. Even if you think you know how big it is, you'll have no idea. <laughs> well, thank you, Allie, for being on today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope the Iola Car Show goes well this year. And hope you hope everything is good with Iola. Thanks so much, Joe and Pod, Pod Pack. It's been a it's been a pleasure being on, and I appreciate you.